with the what? Hello, and welcome back to To The Point. This is not Eric Mitchell. This is his wife, Lucy. Today, I wanna to talk to you guys about something that is near and dear to my heart, or my stomach, maybe to your stomach. It's a little something I'd like to call intuitive eating. So um, I think what's important to remember is that it's, it's not necessarily just a, a free-for-all. You know, a lot of people are, have that concern that, well, if, in, because one of the um, primary components of the 10 principles that intuitive eating is based on is making peace with food mm -hmm. and giving yourself unconditional permission to eat the foods you want to eat. What exactly is intuitive eating, you might say? Well, it's obviously listening to your body and what your body needs. And I giggle and I laugh because as we are in this new year, there are so many different programs out there. And I'm not gonna discredit the creators of those programs because they most likely, or they actually did, go to way more schooling, certifications, institutes, online courses, whatever you wanna call it to get their knowledge. The question I'm asking is, are all calories equally fattening? Take some fat and combine it with some carbs, and what do you get? A happy brain, and possibly the reason why we eat even when we're not hungry. What I love to talk about is the fact that there is a science behind the human body. The human body is one of those miraculous things that if you allow it to do what it needs to do, it will send you signals if you're doing something wrong. So say you're, you're eating what you feel is a healthy meal, and then you, within 30, 20, usually it's about 20 minutes, bloat like a blowfish. So let's talk about some of the anatomical differences between men and women. Women actually have a longer colon than men, about 10 centimeters longer. That might not seem like a lot, but it leads to a lot of twists and turns where gas can get trapped, and it just makes it harder for the products of digestion to get down to the finish line. So that's one reason anatomically why women tend to be much more bloated than men. The other reason is hormonal men have higher levels of testosterone, which means a tighter, firmer abdominal wall that holds everything in, kind of like a built-in Spanx. Mm -hmm. We have to go to the store and buy our Spanx. Men we have don't a have this. Spanx. Charlie, mm -hmm. you have a built-in Spanx. I'm gonna go ahead and guarantee you that there's something that you ate that your body doesn't like, and you don't need a doctor to tell you, your body is telling you. Now, there are times where you'll have inward um, symptoms. There, there's a difference between allergies and intolerances. You can go to the Google and you can look it all up, but an allergy is going to give you that outward symbol where you need one of those flipping shots. The major difference I would say between a food allergy and a food intolerance is a food intolerance is gonna be a little bit milder in nature. So maybe some GI discomfort, maybe constipation, diarrhea. Um, whereas a food allergy can be much more intense, you know, up to anaphylactic shock. So it could be respiratory distress, swelling of the airways, that kind of thing. You know the ones that I don't even know if insurance ever really figured out if it's still gonna cost you like $750,000 in order to get an EpiPen? But an intolerance is one where it's like an inward reaction, bloating, farty, gassy, maybe the top of your hand itches or your eyeball itches or your ears start to ring or maybe you develop an itchy scalp. That is your body's way of saying what you've just eaten is not good for you. So when you intuitively eat, you pay attention to the signals that your body sends you. Another idea or concept I love around intuitive eating is that you look down at your plate and you realize that you have enough to keep you satisfied. Hack your favorite junk food by swapping out refined carbs and saturated fat. For example, make your own pizza with whole grain or cauliflower crust, add the cheese, and then top with vegetables. Now, there are plans out there that like to use containers or little jars or things that tell you how much you should have of a certain thing. What I have a problem with in that is if you do have an intolerance or an allergy or an issue around a certain product or uh, not a product, a certain type of food, that cookie cutter way of eating of just eat a certain number of containers is not going to nutritionally give you what you need. I know this because I lived that way for eight months, I believe, and I gained 40 pounds. Eating what it turned out was way too many carbs. 
because it was too cookie cutter. I wasn't talking with somebody, I wasn't listening to somebody. My body was telling me, you can't have these many carbs. So all of a sudden, I was suffering from vertigo. I was having numbing hands, feet, blurred vision. My hair was falling out. My stomach was constantly extended. I drink some kind of shake, and then all of a sudden I would pass out, not knowing that almost a majority of the ingredients in that shake were basically slowly killing me. But in your brain, too much sugar can contribute to cell aging and death, shrinking your brain and possibly contributing to dementia and other neurodegenerative conditions. Luckily for most of us, our pancreas can release insulin to regulate our blood sugar levels, so we don't have those problems. So. I go back to intuitively eating as understanding that yes, you can have a burger. Yes, you can have a glass of wine. Yes, you can have some ice cream if it agrees with your body and your body agrees with it. If you eat said ice cream and it's full on dairy and you have a dairy intolerance, maybe you should switch to coconut ice cream. It's actually very good then you could still have the ice cream. And that gets me on another point. Stop referring to food as treats and cheats, you're not a dog, and you're not an adulterer. Or adul well, if you are, you've got bigger problems, and you really should talk to somebody if you are a cheater. But we are not animals in that sense. Our food is meant to nourish us. We can also eat around celebrations. There is nothing wrong with that, as long as you don't make that your focal point and your whole being around life. Like, do you go to the gym to earn your food? Because that's ridiculous. I work out to move my body and to, and to improve my mindset so that I keep my stress levels low. I see, so I keep my cortisol levels low. So that way, you know, no matter what, I'm a happier mom and wife. I mean, I'm sure at some point my husband will come on and talk about happy wife, happy life. But, and for me, it's like, give me all the food. But I'm also a very healthy individual because I know how to nourish my body. I do not sit there and go hop on our Peloton and work and kill myself in some Alex Toussaint ride and they be like, woohoo, I just earned a taco. No, I'm gonna eat the taco no matter what because I know the right kind of taco to eat. I know I don't need five tacos. I need one taco. I also know that I need to make sure I stay away from the flour tortillas because I have a gluten insensitivity. And don't look at insensitivities as punishments, okay? It's just your body's way of keeping you in the like, highest optimal form. If you're not eating the way your body is meant to be and you're constantly punishing it, you're doing yourself a huge in-service and you're not gonna live long enough to see your grandchildren. I'm just telling you that much. So. That is my opinion, my personal viewpoint on going into this new year with a relationship with your food. Now, I work with women one-on-one -on -one to help them understand what their gut is telling them. Because remember this much, guys, if you take anything from this, your gut, your microbiome is where it starts. If your gut is unhealthy, and I mean, it is not normal to fart and burp as much as you probably are. I'm just gonna tell you that much. That's your body's way of telling you, you got way too much bacteria in there and you need to like calm it down. Maybe stay away from the bubbly things and you know, get some more greens and some more fiber. Um, there's plenty of articles out there and like recipe books that tell you how to get some amazing fiber and greens into your diet, especially if you don't like vegetables. But if you can just start there by listening to your body. Well, lucky for you and for me, we know a lot more about nutrition now. You probably hear that word nutrition often, and it just means eating a diet that's healthy for you. If this comes to mind when you hear that, don't even go there, because it's not that bad. In fact, lots of healthy foods also taste pretty good. Treating her or him with love and with kindness, and if you don't know how to do that, that's what I do. We just start back, we heal it all from the inside, and then guess what? You're back to eating hamburgers and, ho and not hot dogs. Hot dogs are disgusting. Nobody should eat a hot dog. Unless you're at a Giants game, they're really good. Anyways, getting off topic. But if you just heal from the inside, redevelop a healthy relationship with your food, you will live a longer and happier life. So that's all I have to say. I'm gonna go make some lasagna. Talk to y'all later.